New rounds of severe weather are on the way from Monday to Friday of next week from the Central Plains to the East Coast, and some of them could be particularly intense, and I've got you covered in this video with details on the storm potential day by day, covering where the storms will be, where the models have some uncertainty. Stick around for all the details you need to know on the weather and temperatures ahead. One Nation Weather. As always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come to watch. If you're interested in getting the model maps that I use throughout my videos, don't forget to check out the Weather Bell trial down there linked in the description. Also, if you have not already and you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button if you want consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecast. Also, hit that notification bell so you never miss a time when I post. Now, let's get right into it with the future radar. As we head towards our Friday, May 17th of 2024 here, closing out the week, looking at some of this near-term weather that we've got going on from parts of the Midwest, really heading out of the Midwest into parts of the Ohio Valley, back down towards the Gulf Coast later in the day. We're going to be watching some showers and storms really firing on up. Some of the showers will have even been ongoing during the morning hours. This will cause some flooding concerns, especially if you go down through parts of the Ohio Valley. Closer to the lower Mississippi Valley and Gulf Coast, we'll not only be watching some flooding in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama late Friday, we'll also be watching the potential for some scattered scattered severe storms with large hail, damaging wind, and maybe a brief tornado or two. Now here we go towards the time on Saturday, same time, 5 to 8 o'clock in the afternoon and evening. We'll be watching a system that will have been bringing some morning scattered showers, ramp on up with some additional thunderstorms in the afternoon, a little bit of a flooding risk over parts of the southeast, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, the Carolinas, getting in on the heaviest storms during the late part of the day. Most of these just bringing that, those garden variety thunderstorms with wind, maybe some heavy rainfall being the main hazards, nothing too extreme beyond that, and some light now, once we get towards our Sunday, May 19th of 2024, we're going to be watching up here over the North Central Plains, really heading on down maybe towards parts of northern Oklahoma as well. This new system, a low pressure system, ejecting on out here into parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota. A cold front along that will bring the potential for some late-day severe weather, and especially Nebraska and Kansas there. By the time we head towards late Monday going into our early Tuesday here, so May 20th going into May 21st, we'll be watching what's left of that low-pressure system combined with a new low that's going to be trying to move on out over somewhere in the central plains. It's a little uncertain exactly where that's going to be. Nonetheless, this overall area and overarching theme means that we're going to be watching some scattered showers and storms, some of them possibly severe from parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Minnesota, back down there, especially into parts of southeast Nebraska, northern Kansas, and that secondary low that's developing over Kansas, likely as we go late Monday going into Tuesday. By the time we head towards late Tuesday afternoon and evening, heading in towards the early Wednesday, May 22nd time frame, we could be watching a pretty potent surface low develop out of that and continue towards the east, towards parts of Wisconsin, Michigan, and especially bringing some maybe scattered severe thunderstorms back through parts of Illinois, Indiana, all the way back down there towards northern Texas. That's something we'll consistently have to track as we head through the mid to late week time frame next week as it looks like that low will continue through the Ohio Valley, maybe towards parts of the Northeast Wednesday late day, maybe even a remnant piece of that continuing towards Thursday over that area. We'll also be watching down here closer to the Gulf Coast in the Southeast to see what occurs. The models are certainly in disagreement here. The European model showing that the front really sinks southward much faster there over parts of the Gulf Coast on Wednesday. GFS has it lingering around in the Tennessee Valley region during that time frame. So there's a lot of discrepancies once we get towards the midweek time frame and onward. But what we do know is that that low will exist and potentially another low just like this one that the European model is showing bringing that spin and bringing a new system out over the central plains by the end of the week around Friday May 24th so an active week ahead next week we've had a lot of these recently and what I like to do when we have one of these active weeks is look at the mid-level jet stream say 15 to 20,000 feet right above people in America's heads here you can see we've got a couple different features on the jet stream we'll be watching here and really a broad area of troughing or just a dip in the jet stream here bringing some low pressure over the central plains as we head towards late Sunday May 19th so really anywhere out of the four corners heading on up there into the upper Midwest. We're going to be watching kind of that one piece of energy you can see from northern Utah heading towards the South Dakota and North Dakota region. And also that secondary piece of energy down there heading on into the southern plains. These two pieces kind of combining to help fuel a central plain severe weather threat Sunday. Now as we head towards Tuesday in the early morning, and this is really what's going to support late Monday severe weather threat as well if we can get one over the central plains, which certainly looks like it will occur. We're going to be watching this little trough here make its way on out of the four corners heading on up there into the central plains. And you can see some of those yellows, even those oranges trying to get going, indicating that this collection of models or this ensemble group here that we're looking at, really an average of a bunch of different models ran run together here, showing that we could see some 50, 60, even 70 knot mid-level winds here. And that's pretty intense coming out of the west-southwest here in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere and the jet stream. You can see this overall green area where we've got the stronger jet winds continuing towards parts of the central plains and eventually progressing towards the Midwest and Great Lakes here as we head towards late Tuesday 
Wednesday, and then late week progressing into parts of the northeastern United States. Then notice, just like clockwork, we've got at least a broad sense and a broad signal here from these European ensembles. Again, a collection of models forming a group here, really indicating that we could see another type of trough move into the central plains as we head towards the end of next week. That's just one thing we like to look at for the overall pattern and what could help to fuel in the mid to upper level severe weather. But let's look closer to the surface here. In fact, look right at the surface with these dew points. Dew points measure the moisture in the atmosphere in this area that I'm circling late Sunday, May 19th, around say six, seven o'clock in the evening, the European model indicating from parts of Texas all the way on up there to South Dakota, you can see a dry line. We've got those pinks, those very dry dew points on the left side of that dry line, the west side of it, 60 to 70 degree dew points on the east side of it. And that's right over the central plains. So some intense moisture really setting the stage and really getting going early next week as we've had a lot of moisture return time frame from our most recent significant systems. Notice here as we head towards Monday, May 20th, late in the day, dew points in the 60s and 70s once again from parts of Texas and Louisiana, now all the way on up towards the upper Midwest. So again, the environment pretty prime at the surface moisture-wise for severe weather there. As we head towards Tuesday, by the way, these 60s and 70s indicating a very moisture-rich environment. 50s can even support some severe weather, so any of those shades where you see the lighter yellows, some of those can at least be moderately conducive for severe weather. You can definitely see in this orange shade, though, late Tuesday from the Midwest and the Great Lakes back down towards Northeast Texas, where those deeper oranges are getting going there in terms of 70s to 75 degree dew points there. Crazy stuff. That's where the severe weather environment is on Tuesday. And then as we head towards Wednesday, May 22nd of 2024, this front sagging southeastward. And again, exact location of this a little unknown. Certainly looks like it'll be diving south through parts of the Ohio Valley really heading southeastward, I should say, through the Ohio Valley and towards the Gulf Coast as well, bringing some severe weather at least along with it in isolated fashion still at that point. Now you can see here as we head towards our Sunday, going back to the low level jet stream here, so just a little bit above our heads, winds moving in from the south pretty quickly. And remember, we were looking at some pretty strong westerly winds in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere Sunday afternoon. Certainly looks like the threat will initiate there for next week's severe weather, starting with the first day of the new week over parts of Nebraska, Kansas, getting going with an all hazard severe weather threat as we head towards monday may 20th you know a broad area of low level jet stream energy looks to at least exist with some 30 knot readings in isolated fashion over parts of the central plains in some parts of the midwest and upper mississippi valley as well monday might be a little bit more of a transition day in terms of severe weather as we kind of wait on that next surface low to erupt and head further east as we head towards the tuesday late time frame as you can see by the time we head towards the end of the day tuesday we've got a lot more in the way of those low level jet stream winds here from parts of northeast texas especially on up through illinois indiana Indiana, on up to parts of Michigan as well. Again, just because you have these ingredients does not mean you're getting severe weather under them, but once you have the moisture, this low-level jet stream, the upper-level jet stream, all those ingredients we looked at combined, you're pretty much looking at a pretty potent storm system in place, and you can definitely see that continuing to evolve over parts of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley Wednesday with even more intense um, low-level jet stream winds crossing with those mid-level ones from the west and it's spinning to potentially produce some tornadic storms then, and of course, anytime you get those overlaps of those winds, that's when you're looking at the tornado potential to develop. So let's start with Sunday on my ONW severe risk scale. It goes from zero to seven. Right now, I've got a three of seven for severe risk over parts of Kansas and Nebraska with this new system on Sunday. A regional eruption of severe storms with scattered wind damage, large hail, and at least a couple tornadoes appears likely to me um, late Sunday across parts of Nebraska and Kansas. This environment should be conducive for all hazards again, and that could include some tornadoes. Note, though, from the Dakotas all the way back down in North Texas, be aware late Sunday. And remember, I will upgrade these risks as we get closer more than likely and gain certainty. Monday, May 20th, and this does include Monday night as well. Although ingredients remain uncertain for placement and timing late Monday, a small area of focus severe weather potential possibly along a warm front there in southeast Nebraska, northeast Kansas, northwest Missouri, and southwestern Iowa is catching my eye. Um, other parts of the Midwest and upper Midwest need to keep an eagle eye to the sky, say, as we head late Monday and really even as we go towards Tuesday. Remember that surface low, that secondary one that we're watching early next week. Getting going here and moving towards the Great Lakes, it looks like, on Tuesday. And that's going to support late Tuesday going into Tuesday night when that lower level jet stream kicks in with all the moisture and upper level ingredients as well. I've got a broad three of seven on my own W severe scale now from parts of eastern Oklahoma all the way on up there towards southern Wisconsin. Remember, we are five days out from this as I film this video, and for me to already have that increased certainty in a front moving through with potent severe weather along it, we'll probably get some risk upgrades there as we get closer, assuming the models hold steady. And in terms of my severe scale as we head towards Wednesday, May 22nd, it looks like the best pockets of potential for severe weather will be in the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and then back on over there towards parts of Texas, but really a broad area and at least the light green camp 
can't rule it out. And again, we'll probably upgrade risk on every single day as we get closer once we gain more certainty. Now let's move on here. Let's talk some temperatures, shall we? And as we head towards our Friday, May 17th of 2024, looking at temperatures across the country, you can see over parts of the north central United States, we're looking at a lot of upper 80s, some low 90s getting going. Temperatures 10, 15, 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year over at least that region as we head towards Friday afternoon. So definitely a pretty intense heat over that area. And you definitely make sure you're drinking plenty of water in a lot of these zones across the country, even if you're in the 70s and 80s, just like the Ohio Valley zone I just circled will be. Otherwise, in terms of heat and other temperatures, we're looking at really south of this line being where it's going to be above 80 degrees otherwise, except for that pocket that, again, that's going to be up there in the north central plains. Friday, now as we head towards Saturday, May 18th, 2024, you can see a broad pocket of a lot of mid to upper 80s here stretching from northern Texas and really some 90s there as well, all the way up to parts of the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, where in northern Michigan it will even be near 83 degrees as we head towards Saturday afternoon. Down there in south central Texas, closer to the Rio Grande there, the border with Mexico, we're going to have some temperatures breaking records in the boxes. 100 degrees for that regular temperature, not even factoring in the dew points and the moisture there. Really warm. Make sure you drink plenty of water there in Florida and back on over towards Arizona, southern Nevada, southeastern California over the next several days, really, as this pattern continues to erupt with a lot of warmth. Look at this. Sunday, May 19th in the afternoon, a broad area with a lot of 80s. That includes some mid-80s there sitting around Detroit, Michigan, Lansing, Flint, all these areas, northern parts of Indiana in the Fort Wayne area. We're looking at central Arkansas from Little Rock back over to parts of the Texarkana region. Look at that, some low to mid 100 degree readings, some 100 to 105 readings there in southwest Texas Sunday afternoon. Crazy heat, man. And I'm telling you here as we go towards our Monday, May 20th of 2024, it's going to keep going in some of these areas. And again, this is unseasonable warmth in some spots for this time of the year, at least by a little bit, especially the further south you go. I mean, look at some of these temperatures even getting on up in the severe weather risk zones there and there that we'll be watching late Monday. Some 80s getting going, some 80s as far north as parts of northern Michigan heading towards the upper peninsula trying to get in the 80s. Um, Sunday, Monday, going into Tuesday, we'll be noticing this front beginning to sag towards the southeast. This is what really makes severe weather the peak of severe weather season. You've got all these 90s, these 80s to the south and east of this front that's going to be over parts of the Central Plains and the Midwest on Tuesday. Back behind it, you've got 50s and some 60s at best in the afternoon. And that interaction of these two air masses that you can get in the spring as we transition from really the wintertime towards the summertime, the Rockies air mass versus the Plains air mass, that's what always causes that clash and that severe weather. That's why we're watching next week very closely. And even as we head towards Wednesday, we'll begin to notice that front really head towards the southeast. So knocking back some of these 80s closer to the Gulf Coast and looking a little bit more normal in terms of the pattern with the 80s hugging the southern border of the United States. You can see the 90s and a lot of spots of Texas continuing those. We head towards Thursday, May 23rd. Lots of 70s and 80s over other parts of the Midwest, the upper Midwest. Look at this, a broad area of some low to mid 80s as well over especially parts of Missouri, Illinois, heading all the way down there to the Carolinas. Carolinas and Georgia, where some spots will push the upper 80s on Thursday. Now, looking briefly at the 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook here from the Climate Prediction Center, this goes from uh, May 22nd to May 26th, looking warmer than average in the east and south cooler than average in the north and west, and this kind of pattern is what causes that clash over the middle of the country, and you know what that means? It looks like severe weather may continue to go strong. Remember, I showed you that system on the European model for as we head towards Friday and next week. Climate Prediction Center showing above average precipitation over a lot of the eastern half of the United States. So really starting in the central plains, heading eastward. No reason to pretend that we're not going to be seeing more severe weather continuing. It looks like we're going to have an active closeout to the month of May and maybe even some areas further north being continually included in some of the severe weather. So if you want to stick with me for all of those updates that I provide as we get closer to this event and events down the road, I like to do those longer range forecasts, kind of keep you in the know. Hit the subscribe button right now. I appreciate you joining me. Um, and that's it for this video. Everybody have a great rest of the weekend into the early weekend.